Hmm. Oh, hi, I'm Paul Rudd. I didn't see you right there. Please step into this artificial kitchen and learn a little bit about what I eat when I'm trying to shrink down to the size of a carpenter ant. How Paul Rudd got extremely shredded for Ant-Man and the Wasp? Is he natty or not? Let's talk about it. So in today's video, we will be watching that video from Men's Health. We will be evaluating and reviewing the video. And from all the information given, I will deduct my answer of, do I think Paul Rudd is natty or not? And if that sounds like something you might be interested in, let's just hop right into it. But before, really quick, we need to ask ourselves some questions. Was the transformation fast? Is he showing fake natty energy, like being the hardest worker in the room? Chicken, broccoli, rice, you know the drill. And did he put on excessive amount of muscle considering his age? Now with all that out of the way, now we can officially hop into it. It's weird, you know, if I think about the philosophy behind my diet, they're in different phases. If I have to eat specifically because of a movie role or something, my philosophy is stick to the plan and be very disciplined. If I'm trying to just stay healthy uh, and live a normal life, it's stay disciplined to a point because you've got to live your life. I think those are two very different But does it have things. to be two very different things? If you're eating at a main gain stance like Greg Doucette says, why would you have to be sometimes disciplined and sometimes not disciplined? Eat food that you like, consistently work out, and you should have an amazing transformation. Remember, it has to be a lifestyle, not a diet, or else you are gonna go bad in those bad slopes. You're gonna end up binge eating and losing all your progress. If you just main gain, you wouldn't have to do these big leaps for movie roles. I mean, I mainly avoid really heavy, like, breads and fried foods and sugar and to a certain point. I had to do a couple of shirtless scenes. Both. Now I actually really love how he said he cut out those foods to a certain point, which I think is awesome. It's all about that that balance in the diet. That way you can just, it can last longer. And as I said before, it can be in a lifestyle. You don't have to eat chicken, broccoli, and rice. You can have that cake, you can have the brownie, you can have the fried dough. Just make sure it's not a lot of it. What was the question? What is my favorite carb? You know, French fries are just one of the God's greatest creations. French fries and I mean, a pizza, a slice of pizza is just great. And a pint of Guinness is the shit. Again, all these things are perfectly fine to have within moderation. I would definitely watch out the booze just for the bodybuilding point of view because it can raise your estrogen levels, which is bad for muscle growth and muscle hypertrophy. But again, anything in small doses is awesome. If you want to have that, you know, that Guinness, go on ahead and drink it. You know, just don't do it obsessively. That's all. I am a chunky peanut butter all the way, even when I was... Well, there you have it. He's not natty. That settles it for me. I've heard all I needed to hear kid and my mom would get the garbage peanut butter and like super chunk. I'm like, yeah, I want that one. But now I, you could just like crack some peanuts on top. Okay, but seriously, what was the point of this question? He just goes on rambling about peanut butter <laughs> and peanuts for like 10, 20, 30 seconds. Like what, what's the point of that? I don't understand why they even asked him that. Like, why does that matter? What peanut butter you like? Top of my peanut butter tastes good to me. That being said, smooth peanut butter is awesome. Okay, yeah, I love Paul Rod again. You're a great guy, man. I thought you were natural the whole time, buddy. Also, the best food smell in the world. What are these questions? Why are we asking that? The whole point of the video is how Paul Rudd got shredded, and why are we asking him these nothing burger questions? I wonder if his favorite food is burger. Hmm. Maybe they'll ask him what burger he likes next. I have a love-love relationship to bread. People always ask you, like, if there's one thing you could eat that no, it didn't have any effect on you, probably choose bread. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. You can make a lot of meals with bread. It's nice, simple, it's cheap, and it's a nice, simple carb. It'll help you get ready for the gym easier. What's better? I like it with the olive oil and put some salt in it, but I, I don't eat it as much as I want to because I can't anymore. I look at my kids that do it, and I'm just jealous. Do I ever dip on my pizza crust in anything? No. Yo, when I tell you I had to skip like half this video for the nothing questions, I'm not even joking. 
why are they asking him this? It just doesn't make any sense in my mind. Do you dip your pizza crust in anything? Is that the secret to how he got shredded? By dipping his pizza in... I, I don't understand. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't get it. Well, I don't know what I would dip them. Was there like a bowl of ranch or something on the table? How many cups of coffee? There is no such thing for me as too many cups of coffee. People say, oh, I already had a cup. I'm like, yeah, so what? I, the whole idea of like, I gotta cut back on my caffeine is weird to me. I don't care about caffeine. Caffeine is like, fine. I just can't have it after five. If I have it after five, I'm screwed because I will stay up. But I'll drink 10 cups of coffee, black coffee, strong black coffee. And that's why my breath smells great all the time. You see, I don't necessarily disagree with him. Caffeine is a great diuretic. It's a great nootropic. And I love my pre-workout. You're not going to get my pre-workout away from me because it helps me so much to elevate my workouts and get me in the right mindset for the gym. Now, with that being said, there are some negatives. Like having that much caffeine is a lot and could be considered a lethal dose. Also, you're not getting the full benefits of, of caffeine if you're going to keep taking that much of it every day because it's just not going to hit the same and you're going to have to have more and more caffeine. So it's a bit counterproductive. I recommend if you can, just take a little break from the day of caffeine. Also, try to prolong your caffeine use to right before your workout. That way you get even more productive use out of the caffeine. That's all. And if you have any part problems, don't take caffeine. Talk to your doctor about it. Seriously. The basic kind of overview of what I eat changed about 10 years ago when I first got, you know, all the ant stuff. It was the first time in my life that I really had to change my approach to nutrition, training. I had always worked out here and there. When I did this, it was like a shift. All of a sudden, fitness and nutrition became kind of the centerpiece of the day and everything else fit in around it. Now, to the average person, that sounds corny as hell. I'm not even gonna lie. But when I tell you I first started working out, that was the most addictive thing ever. I would go two days, of, oh, like two times in a day. Yeah, I, w I was destroying my muscle. I wasn't getting any growth out of it, but you could not keep me out of the gym. And I know that's probably not for him, but for me, it was like a full-time job. You know, right after I got out of school, I would spend my whole day at the gym. So I definitely understand it, it being like a full-time job, you know? You know, I'd say that uh, my trainer, Richard Louie, who's standing right over there, you can't see him, but everyone else can see him because he looks like a giant. He once told me, diet and exercise is not about motivation. It's about discipline. And I'll tell you what, that is the wisest thing ever. Everyone always asks me, Jacob, what's your motivation? How do you keep going? Look, dude, when I started getting motivated, I was 115 pounds, and now I'm almost at 180. So it's all about the discipline. The motivation can only get you so far, but the discipline is what's gonna keep you going to the gym every single day. You have to go, I wanna be the best person out there, and I have to discipline myself to be there and go to the gym every day. You know, some days I don't wanna be at the gym. Some days you're not gonna wanna be at the gym too, but you have to find that discipline to go there, go in the parking lot, sit there, drink your pre, and get in that gym. And that's just what you have to do sometimes. You just have to do it. I can be pretty disciplined. It helps when you have a big Marvel movie that's coming out, it kind of forces you to do it. But I discovered that it, when I'm in it, I can stick to it. And when I'm off of it, it's really hard to get back into it. Uh, I don't count macros only because I don't know what counting macros means. Controversial opinion, but I agree with them. I mean, no, obviously I know what macros are, but I don't think they're all that necessary to count unless you're trying to get absolutely diced for a bodybuilding competition. As long as you're getting enough protein in and enough carbs in, you're absolutely fine. A good protein goal would be a gram of protein per pound that you weigh. And that's just good for building muscle. But there's no reason to count macros. Granted, if you want to count macros, by all means, absolutely, go ahead and do it. Whatever works for you. But I don't see a point in counting macros, if I'm being honest with you. Counting calories, on the other hand, absolutely necessary, depending on if you're bulking or wanting to cut or wanting to do a maintenance. I don't take any supplements. You know, I know that probably a multivitamin is a good thing to do, but I don't even do that. My diet is pretty well-rounded and hopefully I'm getting all the nutrients and everything I need for my food. So obviously if you don't wanna take supplements, you don't have to. I would definitely recommend taking them if you have to. Definitely talk to your doctor about them, but supplements, they just take your exercises and your nutrition to the next level. 
Again, yeah, you can get everything from your nutrients if you're eating the proper diet, but there are going to be holes in that diet, and that's where the multivitamin can come to play. If you don't have enough protein in, protein powder is a great option, and pre-workout is just amazing. Let's just be real here. Here's the thing. I always thought about, oh, a cheat day. Got to have a cheat day. And I've learned like, oh, I don't have cheat days, but I will have a cheat meal. When you're really training, you don't want more than one meal. Sometimes you don't even want the one cheat meal, but it's important to have a cheat meal. It's good for your head, and it's also delicious, and you enjoy it in a way I never did before. Again, he is absolutely right. Cheat days, it should not be a cheat days. Maybe a cheat meal, you know, treat yourself to that cake. It keeps you healthy. It keeps your mind sane. But when you start working out, you start eating healthy, you're just like, you know, maybe I could go without it today. And that's what it's all about, is keeping that lifestyle in check. And so I enjoy that meal a lot more because of it. I think diet is probably harder, but I think that when you're in it, neither one is that difficult. The difficult part is starting. And I think you gotta give yourself two weeks to get into a real groove. I also Again, I don't wanna keep glazing the guy, but he's absolutely right. That is actually my motto. Give it two weeks and you're going to love it. Now for me, dieting is definitely the hardest part. Working out is more of the fun part. All right, so we watched the video, we looked at his mannerisms, and we did the review. So what's the answer? Do I think that Paul Rudd is natty or not? I think he's absolutely natty, and I would be shocked if he's taking gear. Again, that's always a possibility, but I loved how straightforward, honest his answers were. He said them in a very human way, like, like just like the Chris Pratt video. Yeah, you know, I love to have my cake. I love to have my Guinness every time the time. And, you know, I make mistakes. I'm human. He didn't say any answers that were out of the ordinary. He didn't say how hard he trains, how he puts in three to four hours of the gym every day. And then he'll do the rock classic cheat meal type of deal. Like, he was just giving very genuine, honest answers, and I have no reason, no speculation to think he's on gear. Again, it's always a possibility considering his age, but he really hasn't done anything that crazy when it comes to transformations. I think he's a healthy enough guy, and he's in great shape. I mean, hell, he got world's uh, best looking guy by People's Magazine, so he's clearly doing something right. And I actually really love this video because it gives people a realistic expectation on what they can look like, if they just dial in and just be a little more disciplined. With all that being said, I think it'll pretty much wrap it up for today. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.